Hi everyone, so today we're going to have a battle between three of the most famous and most affordable dive watches and those are the Seiko SKX, the Orient Mako and the Citizen Promaster. Off we go! <laughs> Hi everyone, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. So yeah, I thought I'd have a bit of a discussion about each of these three watches and then give you my opinion on each and basically tell you what I think in terms of the relative quality of each of the watches. Obviously, these are three pretty similar watches in many ways and they are all kind of entry level diver watches. So you might be trying to choose between them. This is the SKX, the SKX 011, which I no longer own. But obviously there are other iterations of the SKX, there are the 013 which is the slightly smaller version, the Pepsi which is the um, 009 and the black one which is the 007. So they're all 200 meter water resistant, they all have the 7S26 movement which is not hacking, not hand winding, 41 millimeters, they have a hard lex crystal and those are the specs. And these watches are to a certain extent all quite similar in that respect. I think with the SKX, one thing that you've got to factor in is it probably will be quite a lot more expensive than the other two. Prices are going up because obviously it was discontinued and we know that we now have the Seiko 5 which is apparently a, a replacement for this watch. It's a slightly different watch, it's not really a dive watch for example, it's 100 meter water resistant. It's got a see-through case back and things like that, but it looks, it's aesthetically, it's very similar. But I think with the SKX, one thing that you maybe don't get from the other watches is that it's got so much cachet in the watch community and it's got so much character. And if you take a look at this on the screen, it's absolutely amazing looking. Um, or I think it is. Tell me what you think in the comments if you disagree. This model is probably less popular than the 007 and the 009, but with the Jubilee bracelet and with the kind of funky case that it's a little bit idiosyncratic in its design, but not too much. It just ticks a lot of boxes and it, it punches way above its weight in terms of character. I think one thing about the Seiko that I've always noticed when I've owned them is that they're a little bit hit and miss in terms of the quality and by that I mean in particular for me the bezel the bezel action on this was quite good actually for a Seiko diver for an entry-level Seiko diver anyway but it was pretty rubbish in comparison with the other two watches and pretty rubbish really from for what I would expect from it from a dive watch I mean these can cost 400 pounds um, or thereabouts nowadays even on eBay and to buy a, a new model from a shop, the new old stock if you like, it's, it's creeping up even more than that. But apart from that, I've always quite liked the quote unquote lack of quality in the watch. What I mean by that is that you know people talk about the fact that the bracelet's a little bit cheap, the fact that the, the movement doesn't hack in hand wide so you have to do the Seiko shuffle to get it going. I've always quite liked that about the watch. But as prices creep up, perhaps that could be something that could put people off to a certain extent. And this watch wears really well on the wrist, but something to bear in mind is it probably is, for me, the chunkiest out of these three watches. So if you've got a slightly smaller wrist, I would probably go for one of the other ones, if you didn't obviously prefer this massively over the other two. So here's the SKX on the wrist, wears really nicely, wears smaller than you might expect for a 42mm, but it's 41-42mm watch. I know if you've got a smaller wrist you may be thinking, I'll pick up the SKX 013 because that's a smaller, a smaller watch and people recommend that for a smaller wrist and you know, fair play, but whenever I've seen that watch in the flesh I've always thought it was too small. Um, I know obviously that's subjective and things like that, but for a modern diver, the SKX 013 is really, really small. And if you're watching on YouTube, you might not get the feeling of actually how small that watch is. 
This watch wears fine on me and my what my wrist is six and a quarter inches, which is pretty small for for a man's wrist, and it, it fits me fine. So that's something to think about. And then we've got the Citizen Pro Master, the automatic. You can get various versions of this as well. This one's blue. There's a black version. There are quartz versions. This is the one that really um, I mean, and uh, this in the black. This is 42 millimeters. It's again 200 meter water resistant. It doesn't hack, but you can hand wind it. It's got a Myota movement in it, an in-house movement, as does the Seiko. As you can see, the crown is in a strange place, if you like. A lot of people thought that this was a left-handed watch, but the crown is at eight o'clock, which for left-handed people is probably a good thing. And you know, it's a little bit of something different, I think, like the Seiko SKX, this watch design-wise is something a little bit more, again, to use that word again, idiosyncratic. It's not a traditional diver in the sense it doesn't try to look like a submariner if you like. It provides something a little bit different aesthetically. It comes on a rubber strap and it wears really well actually. I'm looking back over the specs. I'm quite surprised about the fact that this is bigger than the SKX because for me it wears smaller than the SKX which for me is a little bit strange. I've not done any kind of measurements of the movement's accuracies to determine which one I prefer out of these, to be honest, because when you buy, or when I buy personally a budget diver, I don't expect chronometer specs, so I wouldn't expect you know, that level of accuracy in the movement, but I've never had any complaints in terms of any of these watches, in terms of the the accuracy that would put me off or persuade me to buy one over the other. Um, from the first moment I unboxed this watch, I just thought it's a really cool looking watch. It gave me food for thought really in terms of, because people love the SKX so much and watch collectors always go on about it and say, you know, you need an SKX. Why don't people feel the same way about this watch? To a certain extent, it's unfair that it doesn't get that same cachet. Is it the, the brand? Citizen perhaps have not got the same level of respect as Seiko, though to a certain extent that's unfair because they, in their own way, make kind of technological advancements that Seiko do. And for me, this compared favorably with the SKX. And I'll go through a little bit more at the end and kind of summing up which of the three watches that I like best, and this is me screwing in the crown. One of the quirks of the watch is basically if you're right-handed, the, the crown's quite difficult to screw in. Not a big deal for me. It could perhaps factor in your decision. Obviously check out my full review that's on my channel. I'll leave a link in the video to it if you want to watch that as well. This is it on the wrist. Like I said, I think that this wears slightly smaller than the SKX, so I'm quite surprised to see that the dimensions actually make it bigger. But, you know, dimensions aren't everything. And then we've got the Mako. I always saw the Mako as being kind of a more traditional dive watch. For me, it looks more akin to the Rolex Submariners of the world. It's not got that kind of quirky design that the other two watches for me have. This is incidentally the only watch that hacks in terms of the movement. It's again an in-house automatic movement. It's got a day date, so it's you know it's quite similar to the other two, but it, it does have that hacking function. It's black, you can get a blue version, and as I said, it's, it's a traditionally styled diver. On a bracelet this time, I know I used to style bracelet. I always found it to be completely acceptable in terms of the quality. I wouldn't expect massively high quality from a watch of this price, but you know, having said that. It's, it's okay, it's, it's, it's fine. Again, in terms of sizing, this is 41.5, 47 millimeters lug to lug, so essentially the same size as the other two. And the bezel, the action was, I think probably the best out of the three for this, for this watch. You know, the bezel felt quite tight, but of a reassuring quality. You know, you didn't feel like it was gonna slip and it wasn't slack and kind of loose like SKX bezels can be. I don't know what your experience is of them, but that's what I've always found. 
This watch, I think it, it wears like a classical dive watch, like you would expect a Submariner to wear. And I don't know why, but this is the watch that probably excites me the least out of the three. It's the, the least interesting in terms of the design. So if you're looking for something, you know, just a watch, you want something that's not too quirky looking, I just want to wear it for most occasions, this might be the best bet. But aside from that, it didn't really excite me all that much, this watch. And I no longer own this watch um, as a result of that. Here it is on the wrist. Like I said, it wears nicely. It wears probably slightly smaller than the SKX, more in line with the, the Promaster. And this is the most kind of classy, traditional diver of the three. You could probably wear this for most occasions, whereas I'm not sure whether I would go with the SKX and certainly not the Promaster if it were the kind of office-based environments. So, in terms of the three watches, which do I prefer and why? And this might help you if you're making the decision between these three watches. And just briefly to discuss price in terms of what I said about these being entry-level affordable divers. The Mako I paid about 110, I think, pounds. So between 100 and 150 pounds. Retail price is slightly different, but I think you can get it for about that. And then the 160 pound Citizen Pro Master. And as for the SKX, you're going to end up probably paying maybe significantly more for that. So you could be talking 200, 300, even more if you're going for it as a new example from a shop. I've seen 400 pounds, even 600 pounds sometimes on, on eBay for as new examples, which I don't think it's worth that price, but you can see that it's slightly more expensive. So if price is a factor, you're probably going to want to go for the Citizen or the Orient rather than the SKX. First of all, just to get it out of the way, my least favourite out of the three is, is the Mako. I'm not hating on Orient or anything like that. And it was a good quality watch. And as I said, if you're looking for a traditionally styled, kind of sophisticated, classy diver that you can wear on any occasion, this might be the best one for you. But I don't think it added anything. It didn't bring anything to the table very exciting for me. Relatively boring watch. I liked it, it was good quality, and it was brilliant for the price, but not something that I would get excited about really in terms of the watch. And I think I was all ready to turn away from the SKX as my favourite, as I think most people's favourite if you judge by the level of love it gets from the watch community and things like that. But having watched this video and done some research, rewatched my previous video, on the SKX, you can't really deny that it's a, an amazing watch, it's full of character, it wears really well, and it's just really, really cool looking. In terms of some of the quality is maybe not there, you know, this, the SKX, you cannot hack it, it doesn't hand wind, things like that, but despite all of those quirks, I think it's just, it's just an incredibly cool watch. I mean, you can see it on the screen now, and you know, it, it, it just is an awesome watch. It punches way above its weight in terms of its level of cachet in the, in the watch community. But having said that, the first time I, I opened the box and saw the Citizen Pro Master, I just thought, you know, the quality is there. And why does this not have the level of appreciation that the SKX has? The dial's really nice. It's a really nice color. It's a really nice size. One could argue that the movement is superior to the SKX because it does hand wind, but also it's so much cheaper and it's a little bit more under the radar, I guess, but it still does have some of the quirk and the, the difference that the SKX has. So, you know, the crown is in a strange position. It's got some funky design features to it. I think in terms of the Citizen though, I don't know about you, but I think that the design is a little bit more dated than the SKX. It seems like a design that was probably really modern when it was released, but it seems to have not stood the test of time as much as the SKX. Though I still do like the design, I think it's a really nice looking watch. That's just something that, like an observation of that watch if you like. 
so as you can see on the screen the the pro master now i would pick this probably as my favorite at the moment and obviously things change it's a really nice looking watch it's got everything that the skx has and it's 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 a cheaper watch and it's one that probably you won't see on as many wrists i think you can't deny though the, the cool aesthetic of, of the skx all right so let me know what you think of these three watches just a run through of my thoughts and comparing them really because in terms of these two watches if you're buying an, an entry level affordable diver you're probably going to be thinking of these three and if you haven't been you, you should do hit me in the comments tell me what you think which is your favorite and why if you like my channel please subscribe thanks very much bye bye